Welcome to Richfield High School as TSB Television proudly presents High School Girls Basketball. Hello everyone, I'm Mike Peden and I'm joined by Alex Nagel as we have a classic suburban matchup between the Hill Murray Pioneers and the Richfield Spartans. Alex, first game of classic suburban play throughout the league. How did the D's teams take the approach? Well, you know, when I talked to uh, Richfield head coach Scott Statham here just a bit ago, He's really keeping things on the uh, K-I-S-S side. Keep it simple, stupid. Basically, they just have you know, to do the simple things and they have to do them well. But inevitably, what he wants to do is to be able to get into enough transition opportunities and maximize those opportunities because those are the strengths that he feels that this Richfield team can really excel at. And if you don't mind, let's uh, scooch down just a little bit so we don't oh. block our camera from view sure. as we get ready for this matchup. Richfield coming in at two and one. They haven't played much. Jessica January leading the team at scoring, but she has not shown any explosiveness that we're used to seeing from her. The most points she has scored in a game this season has been 21. And in other games, she would get her double-digit figure, but it would take a lot of shots for her to get there. How do you think she works through this struggle from the floor? You know, you have to take it one game at a time, Mike. You, you know, you can't look for the home run complex. You know, she, in other words, she can't force stuff to happen. It's just got to happen on its own. And somebody with the kind of talent that she has and the caliber of player that she has, those talents and those abilities will come out when they're ready to come out. You, you can't force them out, I don't think. We'll talk more about the matchup in a moment, but first here, the starting lineups. For Hale Murray, it's Dana Savino, number 33. One of the players to watch at the start of the year. She's a 5'7 senior guard. Allison Angeli, 34, 5'11 junior forward. Sophie Schwartz, the 5'11 senior forward, number 40. Caitlin Langer, 6'3 senior center. And 51, Tessa Doolittle, 6'2 senior sounds center. Fa sounds familiar, doesn't that Doolittle name? <laughs> so does Tessa, but for a different reason. Yeah. Richfield will start Jessica January at guard number 14. Sierra Ford Washington, number 30. She's also a guard. Kyla Adams, number 40, a 5'10 sophomore forward. Leah Barnes, 6'1 sophomore center. And Dominique Hammonds, the 5'4 junior guard. And the reason she is starting, Haley Lindblom tore her calf muscle oh. in the game against Central and will be out for several weeks. I've, I've done that before. That takes a while for it to heal, trust me. Richfield will wear their home crimson jerseys, Hill Murray wearing the white jerseys. First game of classic suburban play for these two teams. There was already a minor upset of sorts last night when Tartan defeated Simley, one of the preseason favorites in 3A. First possession of the ball and it goes to Hill Murray, Sophie Schwartz. I spoke with Erin Herman beforehand and she mentioned her team dealing with a lot of illnesses right now, the flu bug getting around and that's affected her ability to coach the way she wants to. Dominique Garrett, Kyla Adams with the rebound. There's Sierra Ford Washington and one of the keys to the game as you've seen, transition. Hill Murray wants to stop it, Richfield wants to exploit it. Will you talk about a contrast of styles, Mike? We've got it here tonight. Hill Murray also wants to keep Jessica January under 20 points. Yep. Now she's explosive enough that she'll get a few plays, but if she shoots the way she has in those first three games of the year, it may not be very difficult to keep Jessica January under that figure. And we've got a foul, a legal screen on Hill Murray. Take a, this, Hill, take a look at this Hill Murray lineup, Mike. It really is rather daunting. You got Caitlin Langer, 6'3", and Tessa Doodlittle at 6'2". That's a very formidable front line. Langer leading the team in scoring for Hill Murray at 13.2 points per game. Of course, the leader in the Classic Suburban Conference and the state in scoring is Tia Albert of Tartan. January, missing from three-point range. And Ford Washington stepped on the line, can't recover it in time. Both teams qualified to the state tournament a year ago. Hill and Murray was eliminated in the quarterfinal round. Richfield made it all the way to the championship, lost to De La Salle. And right and, uh, there you see the explosiveness of Jessica January. Seems to be able to pop out of nowhere at an instant. 
Richfield fans might let, want to see her do a little more on offense. Uh, there's some speculation that she's trying to demonstrate to her future coaches at DePaul where she's going to play college ball, her distribution abilities, but at some point, you're gonna need January perhaps to put in 30 one of these nights. There's two off the inbound play. Jessica January with the steal. There's an open Kyla Adams and she gets the transition basket. And Aaron Herman's gonna call timeout with 16, 17 left in the first half. And what you saw is the yep. example. Exactly. She's what got this game is gonna come down to, really. Yeah, and she's got to get her team calmed down. You know, get the get their heads straight. You know, they gotta make good decisions out there. You saw that last pass, not the good decisions, made a little panicky and resulted in a quick turnover and two more points for Richfield. Now Hill Murray at two and three. They have played a very tough schedule though. They started out with Highland Park and the Scots having a down year, but they've lost their last three. And those three losses include teams like De La Salle and Benilde St. Margaret's perennials in Class 3A, so. And don't forget that they have had some players sick as well here too recently, and that's contributed to some of their difficulties as well. But Hill Murray, a consistent contender, and for you fans out in Oakdale following the Hill Murray team, I wouldn't be too worried about this two and three start. Uh -oh. Jessica January is certainly not worried. She scored four points. Well, speaking of familiarity, I'm looking at Tessa Doolittle's number. Uh, strikingly similar to a former 51 on Hill yeah. Murray's roster. <laughs> now at the University of Iowa. And she's done quite well there. Tessa Doolittle can't handle the ball, though. I spoke with Herman. When Iowa comes up here to play Minnesota later in the season, she's already ordered a 30 or so tickets. She's going to bring the Hill Murray team <laughs> to see Bethany Doolittle. And she told me she admitted she knew little about Iowa until Lisa Bluter came calling to get Bethany Doolittle. And has since turned into a huge admirer of Bluter's coaching and recruiting ability. Kyla Adams is blocked. That's Kaylee Adams, I should say. And that was a and double team is, from Langer and Doolittle. I feel like this is a big position for Hill and Murray here early in this contest, Mike. This is where they've got to get to stop, got to get a rebound, and establish some defensive superiority with their size. This has been a competitive series over the years with Richfield rising in Class 3A and Hill Murray being one of the contenders. One thing Hill Murray has not been able to do, though, win a state championship. They've come close several times. January dishing out to Kaylee Adams for the score. And Richfield scoring the first eight points of this contest. And they could score more off another steal. January turns around, can't save it, but the ball goes right into her hands and she drives oh to the lane for the score. Wow. The start <laughs> bears some resemblance to a game I covered last week Humboldt and St. Croix prep, and Richfield's gonna be called for the foul. And it's gonna be on Ford Washington. And we're seeing Richfield much more poised, much more calm than I saw them even a week ago when they played St. Paul Central. Well, no question, you, you put on this full court press that they're applying right now, it can rattle you in a hurry. And there's almost another turnover. And another foul on the Spartans. That's one bad thing about the full court press early on. Sometimes you can get a little too aggressive and it can lead to some early foul trouble. Dennis Savino with the ball. We haven't mentioned too many of Hill Murray's names yet, but it seems like Richfield's the only team with possession. Jump ball and Richfield has the possession arrow. To elaborate on Hill Murray's close but no cigar metaphor, 2010 they got to the state tournament, lost in the final minute against Benilde St. Margaret's, had a two possession lead that elapsed. 2011, they go back to the championship round but they lose to De La Salle in a rematch of the previous year's semifinals. January pops a three and she will shoot three free throws because she was fouled 
after the shot. Boy, and those are the kind of fouls that are going to, going to drive Hill Murray head coach Aaron Herbert really mad. You can tell she's very upset there on the bench. Actually, the foul was... There was no shooting foul. Must have been away from the ball. Or after the shot, that's why they... You no know, free throws were awarded and an illegal screen of sorts on Richfield. So Jessica January not happy with the call. Three fouls are on each team uh, at the 1357 mark. We may be shooting free throws for a while on this one. New player ends for Hill Murray. That's number 10, Olivia. And you know, that's another one of those mistakes. She was wide open, got a little excited, and threw the ball over her head. Another turnover. Olivia Graskowitz in the game for the Pioneers. And Mike, I can see you keeping some statistics there, and I know the turnover category is going to make head coach Aaron Herman very unhappy at halftime. Not many stats to keep, at least uh, on one side of it. Hill Murray has yet to score. <laughs> Savino losing the ball to January. Goodbye. And Aaron Aaron he Herman wants another timeout. 12 nothing run to start this game, and Richfield really feeling their transition game right now. Yeah, they, they've uh, had a very difficult time just you know getting settled down, making good decisions out there, not only in the, in the bad court, but in the front court as well. And to finish up on Hill Murray, we talked about the quarterfinal loss they had last year. Richfield made state for the first time in school history a year ago, finished second. Brought 42 busloads of students, and even now in these early season games, they're still drawing decent crowds. And I think what it showed last year was just how much this city will stand behind its athletes. And you know, Richfield, one uh, one of the top teams in that section six in Class 3A, might you know they they were a fairly strong bet, I think, to get back to Target Center. And, and the way other teams are shaping up, I know Simley was in the mix, but they've had a slow start. And that preseason ranking may have been a bit premature. Savino misfires, and it was picked up by Kaylee Adams. And Jessica January, as she's demonstrated over the years, very flexible, perhaps the most flexible point guard and player in the state. She took gymnastics when she was younger and can still cartwheel, somersault, and split if necessary. <laughs> Not only quick, but deceptively strong too, Mike. Maybe a little too strong on that pass. But that's one of few mistakes on Richfield's end right now as January is up to eight points already. New player in for the Pioneers. Look at January diving for the ball. It's a jump ball. Hill Murray keeps possession, but January not taking any pause in flustering her opponents. Well, and you know, that just shows you what strong arms and what strong hands she has to be able to control that ball. Ellie Schwartz in the game, number 32 for the Pioneers. One of two sets of sisters on the Pioneers roster. Graskowitz couldn't get the baseline J. The rebound went to Kaylee Adams, and there's her twin sister, Kyla. January pulls up, mid-range in and out. And a rebound by Allison Angeli. Traveling violation on Graskowitz. Barnes and Hammonds will step back in for the Spartans. What's really impressing me, Hill Murray, one of the front runners in three, Richfield so far dominating, and they don't have Haley Lindblom on the floor, and yeah. she brings a very 
tenacious defensive ability when she gets on there. Leah Barnes off the bounce pass from January. She really had to elevate to make that shot, and she did just that. Well, Hill Murray has the size advantage, even if they don't have the experience, and they finally get on the board on a little transition play of their own. That's Ellie Schwartz on the score. And let's see if that gives Hill Murray some confidence and helps them to settle down. Still a long way to go, of course. And the bad pass is intercepted by Allison Angeli. Graskowitz for three. Off the mark, and Bobby Beaver with the rebound for the Spartans. January looking to feed inside to Barnes, can't get there. And Hammonds can't handle the pass, turns it over. I think the other thing that's got to disappoint head coach Aaron Herman in the, this early juncture is the rebounding side, Mike. You know, basically, when Moundsview has taken a shot, it's been a one and done deal, even with their size advantage. They do have a size advantage, but they don't have the experience they used to. In previous years, you, know, you had that two player tandem of Bethany Doolittle and Tessa Cicci, and yeah. they were the anchors. As Savino misses the long two, offensive rebound, no putback for Tessa Doolittle. And the rebound goes to Kaylee Adams. And so Herman taking a big picture approach as most coaches do it in December. Saying just want to get a little better each game. But the huge difference between last year and this year, she said, we could go 10 deep. There is no one player that will try to rescue the team. That's a traveling violation on Hammonds. Everybody wants to step up now. They all understand. They all need to contribute. So they're not going to pass out to Sitchi or Van Dyke or, you know, Bethany Doolittle in years past and let her save the team. And, you know, Mike, I think the other thing, you know, with, with this relatively young group, as each game goes along, they're going to get a little bit better each time. Doolittle, baseline J is good. I'll say this, the Doolittle family, a very tall bunch. Most definitely. Leah Barnes draws the foul as Doolittle made contact. But I think Bethany was what, 6'4"? Six, six, I six, believe four, so. Six, five. I be I Tessa. In that, right in that range. Yeah, Tessa at 6'2". And probably still growing. <laughs> I wonder how big their parents are in terms of height. I would guess taller than you and I. I would take that bet. Leah Barnes on the season, not very active. Nicole Thompson just checked in for Hill Murray, the junior. Barnes is averaging a couple of points a game, but still a lot of maturity for her. And it's not because of discipline as she gets the back end. It's because she's a year younger than most of her peers. Yep. Age-wise, she should be a freshman, but classed up. Of course, nothing wrong with that if you've got the smarts, the skills. That's what it's all about. Langer gets out. And another long two that gets stuck. Well, that... that Night, Allison Angeli will have a that's, blooper for uh, her highlight reel. That is uh, Hillbury's uh, night and, in a nutshell. And Ford here, Washington so uh, doesn't quite have the vertical. Just and January nobody, can't get it. I they're trying to figure out how to get, get there. And there we it. go. Nobody could quite figure out how to get the ball dislodged until a fan walked up and had the vertical. The players on the floor did not. <laughs> Improvisation never hurts. Turnover starting to uh, creep up on the Spartans here over the last few possessions. I'm sure that's something that uh, head coach Scott Statham wants to clean up at the half. That was an issue against St. Paul Central. Of course, they did such a good job at forcing turnovers. It was a very close game until the last couple of minutes when Richfield lost their composure a little bit. 
And Graskowitz still can't find the jumper. And Jessica January gets past the outstretched hand of Langer for the rebound. And a new player in, that's uh, Mackenzie Schramm, number 21 for the Spartans. Adams for three, no good. Ford Washington offensive rebound. And Schramm will line up the three, and she's too strong. Ford Washington, no, but she'll get free throws. Erin Herman imploring her team to box out on these opportunities they're getting, and they're not boxing out and getting rebounds. Richville getting second and third chances, and now getting the foul line as well. Ford Washington, though, not a great free throw shooter, at least not to start the year, but she proves me wrong on that attempt. Uh, against Central, Richfield in general struggled from the free throw line. Sammy that was Schme one of the elements that cost them a chance to steal a win on the road. Sammy Schneider, of six foot freshman, just checked in for the Pioneers. Number 25 for you folks at home. And there she gets her first touch and her first basket. Nice shot by the freshman. It's 17-6. Schramm, bullseye. Wow. Off the glass, no less. 20-6 in favor of the Spartans. And Hill Murray can't get the counter. Langer off target. January from three-point range. Still hasn't found her shot, at least not in the games I've seen. But she gets a steal, and there's a high percentage shot for the senior. And did Aaron Herman call another timeout? Aaron Herman look, looking like uh, she wants to reach for a bottle of Excedrin here, and it's not there at the moment. <laughs> No, it was Richfield who called the timeout. An unusual junction, you might say, considering Richfield with all the momentum right now and building their lead up to 16. Yeah, you know, it's it's one of those things, you know, yeah, you've got a nice lead and, you know, things are going your way, but yet at the same time, you know, if you're Scott Stedman, you still want to be able to play clean. You want to be able to limit those turnovers. You know, do the small things well, like he was talking about at the top of the broadcast. You know, he thinks those are important for his things, and those are those easy transition opportunities where they excel. It's effectively the same roster from a year ago, but a different coach, and, you know, new coach, new system, although Statham was an assistant under Leanne Wise for several years, so already has a familiarity with the students, but now he's got to be the one making the calls instead of... Uh, well, you advising know, you know, being wise on what to do. I think despite the change at the top spot, I think there's still, the expectations are still very high here at Richville. They expect great thing, things from this team, and I think those expectations are uh, right in line, given the talent that they have. As always, though, 3A, this is just from my observation, seems to be the toughest field to speculate on who the favorites are especially for state tournaments, because it seems to be a little more open. Schramm can't get it that time, and Taylor Moore gets the offensive rebound. She'll play a few minutes of varsity, still will play some JV time, because she's uh, deep on the we just heard depth Aaron chart. Herman there screaming, get a rebound. That's those second and third chances I was just talking about that Richfield is getting on seemingly every possession. I can't quite hear what she's saying, but again, she understands, hey, we may not win too many games right now, but it's about learning. And again, when you have players that who took support roles in these last few years, yeah. it's going to take a little while to make that transition, but Hill Murray benefits from their section. They have perhaps one of the weakest sections in Class 3A. Highland Park is in there, but they haven't been very strong. St. Paul Harding has struggled. There's a couple Ooh, of other teams. Yep. January will get called for the bump on number 20. Again, just being a little too aggressive on there. That's Nicole Thompson in the game for Hill Murray. 
And that's not to say we think Hill Murray is just going to waltz right in and go back to state, but as it is right now, Hill Murray could drop a few games early and really not worry about it. Yeah. Sophie Schwartz. I'll say this, Richfield done a very good job shutting down Caitlin Langer. January with the deflection. It will stay with Hill Murray. And you know, the other thing I'm sure, if you're in Herman, you, know, you just want to see your team look smooth on offense. Chris passes, everybody know what they're knows what they're supposed to be doing. I don't see that right now on the Hill Murray side. Richfield got a deflection, so no backcourt violation. Jumper is short from number 21 on Hill Murray. That is Mackenzie Lindahl. January will go to the line this time. Thought January might have taken an inadvertent shot to uh, the ribs, perhaps, but she looks like she's okay. Just a Still not a shooting up. foul. That's the second time I thought January was called on a shooting foul, yeah. and the officials say no. Boom. Missed a three-pointer, and the rebound by Savino. Lindahl doesn't have the speed, so she'll go to Savino. She can't hit from the top of the key. And then Hill Murray had a fouls to give here, so Richfield should be going to the free throw line. And they are. That's been another issue for Hill Murray. Shots just not falling right now. Yeah, that's, you know, and you know, when you get on, on in a row game like we are right now and, and you get in an unfamiliar gym and you don't feel comfortable, Sometimes it takes a little while before those shots do start to drop. Especially for these younger players. As yeah. we mentioned, you know, folks like Bethany Doolittle, Tessa Cicci didn't have too many Issues. butterflies. No, no. It, coming sometimes, here, it, but sometimes it takes uh, a while to work those out. So that will send Dominique Hammonds to the line for a one-on-one -on -one situation. And she comes up empty on the possession. Richfield with one foul left to give for those of you keeping track. Savino. They find number 32, Ellie Schwartz. And a, maybe a little too unselfish there. Sierra Ford Washington on the steal and the coast to coast basket. Just a lot of uncertainty right now on that Hill Murray side. So plenty of time though, they just gotta settle down and keep plugging away. Foul may be on Taylor Moore, and if so, well, what's most important here is Richfield being out of fouls to give. It is on Moore, and Richfield now out of fouls to give. Schwartz's Long pass skip off. pass. Now is there a danger to being picked off? And that will send uh, Kaylee Adams to the line. The foul is on Sophie Schwartz. And you know, those that's one of the dangers of those cross. Actually, they charge it to Mackenzie Lindell. I was just going to say, that's one of the dangers of those cross-court passes, especially against a team that has a lot of speed and athleticism. You have to be very precise with those passes or else they're going to get picked off every time. But Richfield leaving these one of ones empty. It's one of the few things to go wrong, though, for the Spartans as of this point. As they force another turnover. Schneider, the freshman, lost control of that ball. January hasn't found her three-point shot. And too strong on the mid-range, Jay. 
And Taylor Moore not quite tall enough to handle that pass. Bounce pass yep, is picked here off. Here we go again. We've seen this play a few times. January up to a dozen. 26 to six in favor of Richfield. Kiss off the glass for Sophie Schwartz and Hill Murray just needs anything right now. They'll take anything. Yep. Adams missed her layup attempt and the rebound by Ellie Schwartz. Graskowitz. Well, if she could hit one of those threes, that might give Hill Murray a spark. And we're gonna have a reach in, no, a jump ball. No reach in. It is a reach in on number 25, Sammy Schneider. That will be your third personal. That's her first personal foul. I'm reading the scoreboard a little conversely. Kaylee Adams, again, one and one for Richfield. And Jessica January will take a breather. A well-deserved one, I may add. Well, she has scored 12. Can't connect on that free throw. That's the third time Richfield has come up empty. Whether or not it affects them at the end of this game, we'll find out. But right now, it seems to be of little damage. And the Graskowitz still can't hit the three. You had Angeli open for one, but she hesitated and passed instead. And you wonder if these shooting difficulties we on Hill Murray right now. We have a timeout called. Well, you know, Angeli, she had the ball up there and she thought about taking that shot and then she passed it up. And uh, Richfield called it and we've been instructed to move a little further right. Oh. I guess we made a cameo appearance on camera. Ah. I, that's probably not a good thing. <laughs> Depends on the situation. I mean, not much more to say, though, even though in, in this timeout, Richfield doing more of the same here, and Hill Murray just not getting any shots to fall for now. Yeah. You know, if, if somehow that Hill Murray could cut this lead down to, say, like 13 or 12 points, they'd feel a lot better about themselves going into halftime than they are right now. New player in for the Spartans, number five, Natalie Meeks Johnson. Hammonds, long two, swish. Dominique Hammonds with that shot. Traveling violation on Hill Murray. And Hammonds was highly praised for her work ethic over the summer by former head coach Leon Wise when I had her join me for the St. Paul Central game. She had spent a lot of time at the Centennial Elementary School and Kyla Adams couldn't hit the three. Hammond spent a lot of time working on her shot. And Hill Murray is fouled. They'll shoot a pair. And this will put Ellie Schwartz at the line. Richfield now in the penalty. And that's one thing, Mike, if, if an area when you're way down and if you want to try and find a way to creep back into it, 
this is where you got to do it at the charity stripe. And she does get the back end. Short splits, and she leads Hill Murray in scoring with three points. Of course, the Pioneers only have nine, so you wouldn't expect really high numbers, but Hammonds, that was a low arcing shot. That just demonstrates how much Hill Murray has struggled in his first half. And under a minute to go now, and even though Hill Murray has struggled, this game not out of reach. Mutual, they're up by 19, but that's not a ton of possessions to claw your way back. I've seen bigger legs disappear, Mike. And that is likely going to be the message Aaron Herman conveys during halftime. Ridgefield, clearly the dominant team in the first Ooh, half. I think Savino did something. He's walking very gingerly. Perhaps. But a nice basket by Mackenzie Lindell, and that puts Hill Murray up to 11, so they finally break double digits. But they just needed a basket one way or another. Here's Jessica January. She's going to back off here. Richfield will hold for the final shot. January with a player in her face. Can't get it. Bobby Beaver with the rebound, and she can't get the put back. And that is how the first half will come to an end. Richfield dominant from the tip. They lead 28 to 11, but as we talked about, it's not out of the realm of possibility for Hill Murray to make a return. No, you know, I mean, it's it's not out of the realm of possibility, but, you know, a couple things have to happen. Number one, they've got to get rebounds. They're letting Richfield get in second and third opportunities. That can happen. Number two, you've got to take care of the ball. Look well, how many turnovers they've had in the first half. Those things have just killed them, especially early on. And those are two things that I'm sure that head coach Aaron Herman is going to be stressing at the halftime break. We'll pause for a quick minute. We are expecting to have Kevin Anderson join us for halftime. So stick around. You're watching High School Girls Basketball on TSB Television. And we're joined by Kevin Anderson of KJASR.com, the sports information website for high school girls basketball. Uh, Kevin, you, I guess uh, one benefit of having a Wednesday game is you don't have to make too many choices on which game to attend. That's number one. Number two, it's right in the neighborhood. I'm, I'm not driving two hours away to go to a game. <laughs> That, I, I won't know what to do when I get home at 9 o'clock tonight. <laughs> that is a benefit. I guess your early thoughts so far, well, first, Rich, first few weeks of the season, things are starting to play out. We see you know, Richfield having a bit of a rocky start, Central undefeated in 4A, and Hopkins undefeated, but navigating through some injuries. Uh, so for the start of the year, yeah, there's a... Uh, like you hit on, Hopkins is injured. They They have the depth to overcome that. Um, some of the main players that we thought were going to be main players, again, are main players. Um, Hopkins, Kennedy, uh, Richfield in 3A, De La Salle is going to be all right. So there's a, a lot of familiarity and uh, expectations have been met by some of these teams. I know Providence has a couple losses. But they're losing to 4A teams. They're a 2A team. They are the team to beat in 2A. Any surprises? I know you've met a lot of familiarity that we've seen in the last few years, but any teams that are good, bad, indifferent? Well, one out team that's going to be kind of a surprise to a lot of people right now is Marshall. Uh, in 3A. Fergus Falls is number one. Richfield is number two. Um, Marshall's undefeated. I went and saw them last week against Worthington against another team that was undefeated. And they're explosive and quick and play at a fast pace. They had 58 points at halftime against Worthington. Last night they had 52 points at halftime against uh, Jackson. The first seven minutes of the game they were up 30-4 to four last night. 
Uh, I saw him go on a 30 to one run or 29 to one run against uh, Worthington, who was, you know, is going to probably be in the state tournament. So, uh, yeah, and they're they have good athletes and they know how to win and they're pretty competitive. Now, while we've got a little time, uh, one thing I wanted to ask you about, just your take on it. You can go anywhere you wish. What do you think are some current influences you know, with high school girls basketball in terms of how the coaches approach the game, how the players approach the game? Because you're seeing, like you said, a lot of familiarity. Is there something that well, the, seems to suit these Hopkins they, and De La Salle and these, well, I these think uh, dynasties in the making? If you take a look at who is on top, uh, a lot of their kids are active in the summer on club teams. The ones that team, the teams that aren't very successful, I don't know those kids. They don't play in the summer. Um, I, I, that's basically how it goes. <laughs> and how much of an influence do you think that is? Because there's there's been some discussion both ways about the amount of basketball some of these players will take part in. Some wonder if they play too much and they don't have time to work on their they skill sets. They do play too much. They don't work on their skills. Their shooting is not as good as it used to be. Um, the, the layup percentage, even in summer ball, is like 40%. That's not great. Um, free throw percentage is declining year after year. That's a skill that is the same for any grade, any class, any graduating class. It doesn't change. So those things are measurable. Those things are noted. It is going down, and it's because kids play games. They don't work on skills as much as they have in the past or as much as they should. And why do you think that they spend so much time playing? I mean, Games they just... are a lot more exciting. Get, just getting in a gym and no crowd, no nothing, just you and a ball, that's not as fun as being around a lot of people going after loose balls on the floor, driving to the basket, going against someone, trying to beat them. It's but just more exciting, that, that uh, aspect. Until you get to a championship situation, then you know, miss a free throw when you need to make it, then all of a sudden that uh, strikes out at but you. But see, everybody's in the same boat. Right, that's true. <laughs> so... I guess what do you see, do you see that trend continuing, or what do you what would you like to see more of if that trend is continuing uh, with what these players are doing? Like you said, playing perhaps a little too much basketball, and it's hurting their skill set. Well, I think maybe, and time's running out here, so I'm going to cut out pretty quick. But I think that if maybe they have some sort of. Uh, uh, like Olympic kind of events, the free throw shooting during the summer where they give trophies or awards for that. I don't, it has to be something along those lines. Thank you very much. I got All right, run. that's right. He's got to do some more charting. You can find more about Kevin Anderson at kjasr.com. kjasr.com. And if you subscribe to his site, uh, you can get a lot of the money ball type of information that so many coaches have valued in the last several years and we're going to Alex hand the microphone back and get myself untangled a little bit here Mike I think uh, in this second half here as we get underway I think it's going to be very important for Hill and Murray to do just do some positive things that can instill some confidence in this team whether it's getting a couple early points grabbing some rebounds, causing a turnover or two, just doing some things to instill some confidence. And not much to say about scoring with Richfield leading 28 to 11 as we come out of halftime. Richfield wearing the crimson jerseys, Hill Murray wearing the white, uh, Jessica January leads with 12 points. Uh, in terms of notables, that's pretty much it. Everybody else does not, has four points or less. But again, that gives Hill Murray an opening. They just need even a small run, even like a 10 nothing run. If they can get that going, they're gonna be back in this. They are not down by much. Adams too strong, but she gets her own rebound and gets her own cleanup. Took it right away from Doolittle there. That's a case of not having strong hands. That's something that she's going to have to work on. 
And Savino backs off. And I want to get your take on this, because Kevin mentioned this, and it's a valid point. If you think the kid, a lot of high school kids perhaps play too much organized basketball with the AAU, the fall league, and high school playing, it seems like, year-round with the frequency of WNBA players. Well, you know, I mean, I suppose there's some good points and some bad points about it. But in the end, you know, the bottom line is I think, you know, these kids, they love the game so much and they want to specialize in it and they enjoy playing it so much. Well, it's, what? Really, it's really become basically a, a year-round thing where a player will specialize you know, in a sport and just do that. Well, one point Kevin brought up, and it's worth mentioning, is because they spend so much time playing games, which are more exciting, they don't spend enough time on individual drills like free throw shooting layups. And so these, and well, and maybe that's one reason why you get folks like Gino Oriema suggesting that rims need to be lowered 7.2 inches. January with the steal. Here's an open Kaylee Adams who gets the transition bucket. Almost a replay of how the first half started here, Mike. Hill Murray turnover, PC Richfield points. And Aaron Herman wants to talk and about there's it right another away. familiarity from the first half. Aaron Herman calling timeout. 16 20 remaining, and Richfield up 32 to 11. A little surprising, at least in my view of things, you know, considering how strong Hill Murray has been as a program for so many years. Well, it is. I mean, certainly when you look at it from a scoring standpoint, the way things are going right now. But I wouldn't shed too many tears for this Hill Murray program in the long run. You know they're going to bounce back. You know they're going to be among one of the top programs in the state you know, somewhere down the road. You know, again, it's, it's bringing up the young kids, you know, getting them comfortable, getting them confident, you know, not only just doing things, but getting them confident in the system. And that doesn't happen overnight. It, it takes time, it takes games, and it takes experience. And it takes a little bit of health, too, in the case of Hill Murray, as we yeah. talked about in the open. A lot of players dealing with the flu bug, so not everyone's at full strength. Of course, that will clear with time. And as I've said many times before, and I'll say it again, it's still December. Yep. Here's Caitlin Langer, who has yet to score, and is still scoreless. Good looking left-handed shot, I like that though. And she is the leading scorer for this group of pioneers. Jessica January oh, oh, with the behind the back layup off the baseline there, drive. There's one for the highlight reels. That makes me envious. Caitlin Langer finally gets her first field goal and there's, she'll get a three point play opportunity. There's one of those positives I'm talking about. Let's see if they can capitalize on that. Well, Caitlin Langer at the line. When she's not shooting hoops, a talented vocalist, one of the top performers on the chamber singers at Hill Murray. She completes a three point play and she's also a diehard Law and Order SVU fan. Leah Barnes, too strong. And the rebound going to number 34, Allison Angeli. We haven't called her name in a while. And that was one of Richfield's strengths. Jessica January will be hit with her second personal foul. In the first half, they shut out both of Hill Murray's double-digit scores in Dana Savino, Dana Savino. Talk about Dana Savino. She's got some interesting points. She says that one of the things that she likes to do is that she randomly likes to start dancing. And five second violation as Angeli couldn't get the inbound play in. Yeah, Richfield didn't have too much trivia in the breakdown book. <laughs> but unfortunately, she's on the bench and can't play. But Haley Lindblom, the player who tore her cap, was voted the homecoming queen this year at Richfield. And one of the players she, or one of the students she beat out for that title is the player who just passed over to Sierra Ford Washington, Jessica January. Nice ball movement by Richfield. It really was. It just crisp, sharp, and it's tough to defend.
scoring was Kaylee Adams. And she has worked her way up to six. Here's Kyla on the steal. But Richfield unable to get a transition opportunity there. Langer has a hole and will get free throws. Nice move by Langer there, taking it strongly to the hoop, drawing the foul. Langer looking at a Division II or three school. One of the options she has on her list uh, of all places is St. Thomas. Well, that wouldn't surprise me at all. St. Thomas probably wouldn't mind having her right now. I think, they, if I'm correct, they lost Maggie uh, Wires well, for the season. Especially with Maggie Wires hurting. And they, of course, Anna Smith uh, handling that job right now very well. Does it surprise you? I mean, they finished third in the Division Three championships. Three-pointer for Dana Savino, and that gets her on the board. And this is what we talked about for Hill Murray. Now your scores are at least on the board. Yep. And there's still plenty of time, 14 minutes left. You just need a few good possessions, and well, the confidence will return. Hill Murray applying some ball pressure here too, Mike. January for the counter, bullseye. Wow. Starting to line it up from the outside now. A pedestrian 17 points for Jessica January. No foul called, even though there was a bump. And that's what Kevin Anderson talked about, the layups, although Schwartz may have jumped a little too early. January wow. with a kiss off the glass. Off the glass. She's feeling it now. It's just one of those things. When you start getting warmed up, you, you feel it, and it just everything flows. She has matched her scoring average. And we talk about players who spend a lot of time playing basketball. January, not one of them. No three-pointer from Angeli. January does play on AAU basketball. And a steal here by Kaylee Adams, but who doesn't have the speed for a breakaway. And January also played volleyball for Richfield and is a two-time state champion hurdler, holds the state record in the 100-meter hurdles at 14.32 seconds. In other words, she's got hops. Yeah. Hill Murray can't save it. And I'll say this, we've been mentioning January's name a lot, but I'd say she's having the best game of the of the year in the early part of the season. I would have to agree with that. In Central, she got to 19, but struggled throughout, could not find her shot, struggled from three-point range. Tonight, again, not loud, but she's doing enough. I mean, it says something when you're outscoring the entire Hill Murray team. They're gonna pass her by January, just a little miscommunication down low. And Hill Murray may not be showing it now, but in some ways this roster has a stronger chemistry with each other than previous teams. Whoa. Top of the key tray for Olivia Graskowitz and she finally gets a three pointer to fall. And throws it away. Scott Stadham but, not happy with that turnover there. Starting to creep up again. And Herman mentioned with her current roster, she has 19 players that will register on varsity. And she said they would be willing to step into a claustrophobic room to engage in some kind of activity. There aren't well, any subgroups. Everyone sticks together. You know, that's another easy... Uh, opportunity that Hill and Murray has had and they haven't been able to capitalize. Those are the things that if you're going to get back into a ball game, you've got to be able to capitalize on. January wisely passed on the to the outlet. Hammond's in trouble. January racing in.
double dribble Hammond. violation on Hammonds. That unfortunate possession wasted for Richfield, but looking at Jessica January play, she just seems so calm at the point guard slot in ways that she wasn't before. Yeah. And even under the old coach, Liam Wise, one thing she mentioned to me that January got smarter on the court, in particular with offensive opportunities. She, she used to drive against triple teams, double teams, or even one on four. Not as prone to doing that now. We've got a foul that will send Ellie Schwartz to the line for a pair. Just shows you the maturity level that Jessica January has reached, being a senior and having a lot of experience under her belt. The foul's on Beaver. When you're a little younger, you can uh, you tend to be a little more reckless. <laughs> as I so finally remember. <laughs> Even as a tennis player. Schwartz's first free throw shot is good. See if she can hit the back end. Splits there. Strom throws it away. 10.22 left, that's a traveling violate, or carrying, but either way, Richfield gets the ball back. You see they're icing Haley Lindblom's calf, as we mentioned in the first half, she tore it in the game against Central. And a great inside move for Kyla Adams. She's up to six now. And if that's the one caveat, as Graskowitz can't hit from the top of the key, one caveat of Richfield, push foul call on Schwartz. It seems that you don't have another player. We have a timeout called by, is it Hill Murray? Richfield. I don't see too many players on Richfield outside of January stepping up on offense. You know, January has 19 points, but we're looking at the rest of the roster. The Adams sisters have six, but that's as close as you get. Yeah, you know, and you know, that would be one concern, I think, if I were head coach Scott Statham, that, you know, if you only have one player step up and get a vast majority of the points, is what is happening tonight so far. You know, what happens if that key cog all of a sudden goes out with an injury? You know, who's going to step up? I mean, obviously you don't want to have that happen, but you, know, you want to see other players develop and, and have some different options to go to. I think they have some weapons that, that could do that, but they haven't established themselves or, or showed that they really want to do that yet. And the defending state champion, De La Salle team, similar situation. I saw them play the, that first weekend. They're starting to turn around now, as Kevin said. De La Salle should be a contender again, but you could argue they only have a two-player team. Yeah. They have not been able to find replacements for a couple of solid role players that graduated last year. But again, that's what makes 3A so interesting. Yeah. January. Oh, <laughs> what a move. What a finish. That's your classic January drive for a layup. That brings her up to 21. It's kind of inner competition of sorts. And Kyla Adams will get the transition basket. Where January seems to be contending with Hill Murray as a unit for who can score more points. January has 21. Hill Murray has 22. And she'll add another rebound to that figure. Didn't see a three-pointer. Wow. And if that had gone in, that would have made my night. That I think this whole place it. would have been on its ear. She would have been on a few highlight reels after that, but couldn't make it work that time. 
Langer shot is off and it's picked up and by and Leah Barnes. You know, despite the height advantage that Hill Murray has, it's a one and done deal for him, Mike. Well, Richfield getting a lot more aggressive, yep. getting the Adams sisters over from Kennedy. Some said that helped out. Here's a drive. And a little and too wide. You know, for the Hill thing Murray. about rebounding, and I think any coach will tell you this, it's it's an attitude thing. You know, it really is. You have to have that natural aggressiveness to want to go after that ball, to want to be able to box out, to control those boards. I mean, that's really one of the, the key elements uh, of, of any successful team, Mike. Natalie Meeks Johnson going back in January, stepping out, and depending on how the rest of the game goes, we may not see January for the remainder of this game, but she doesn't need to be in there for that long. And she's done her work. She scored 21 points and Richfield up by 25 against a rival that has been a thorn on the side of the Spartans for years. Yeah. But it's going to be interesting. Just in this conference, Classic Suburban, and even when you get to the section round. As Hill Murray again figures to rebound from this. But Tartan, as we mentioned, they beat Simley in overtime. They've got a strong player in Tia Elbert and perhaps one of the best teams they've had in a long time. Simley was a front runner, but they've lost to a few teams that I don't think folks were expecting to see. And I'm not sure Beaver stepped in the line. I'm not sure they could consistently challenge Richfield and the stronger teams to get to state. Yeah. It could happen. Don't get me wrong, but. Or, you know, you mentioned uh, Hill Murray being a, that proverbial thorn in the side for Richfield over years. Hill Murray, of course, have ha has had their share of uh, LA Ram type heartbreaks when it comes to the state tournament. I knew it would be a, only be a matter of time before a Rams reference came in there. That's a two pointer. <laughs> for Mackenzie Lindell. And of course you and I have seen him there at the state tournament, not once but twice. But Hill Murray, the Los Angeles Rams. Oh, I'm talking about Hill. <laughs> There's a nice block from Caitlin Langer. And that's one of those little things that I think Hill Murray has to build on. You know, you do those, hey, hey I can do this. You know, it just builds confidence. Well, the game for Hill Murray, Taylor Moore is fouled. They have done well against some of these stronger teams. They just need to put together a full game out of it. They yeah. haven't reached that point yet, but I'm not concerned about that. Well, and those are the things that you work on, you know, you take from games and then you try to perfect those things in practice. And Hill Murray will only get more quality tests as the season progresses. You know, they've got a tough field in their holiday tournament, as does Richfield. Yep. A lot of folks speculate it will be another Richfield Kennedy duel. We'll have that for you, of course, here on TSB television both days. And you're certainly invited to take along if you wish on the 27th and 28th of this month. Ford Washington on the steal. Here's Natalie Meeks Johnson, and she traveled. By the way, on that flyer, I was talking about the viewers and yourself. If you want to stop on over for the Richfield Holiday Tournament. That, uh, that sounds kind of fun. Well, it's going to be a lot I've of- I've never been here for the Richfield Holiday Tournament. Well, you're going to be in for a huge event because for the first time they are going to add a boys field so you're going to get eight games in two days. Wow. Four boys teams, four girls teams and a lot of basketball all in one place. That's not something even the tricky dicks as you like to call it were for the Dick's Sporting Goods Holiday Classic. You won't find it there. They don't have any boys counterpart. Well, it sounds like an action-packed tournament for sure. 
Well, as we the see other nickname, Langer go to the line here. Another nickname that is brewed is Caitlin Langer. We'll try to pat her numbers in the free throw line. Another nickname that is brewed is the Lake Conference Invitational because they changed their format this year yeah. from a tournament style format to more of a round robin. Yeah. Because they had a hard time getting teams outside the Lake Conference to compete. Yep. And that's one of the things. Sometimes you get that with, especially in 4A, where the field has become predictable over the yeah. years. You get some schools that are a little discouraged or a little hesitant to play against yeah. Hopkins in Prairie Minnetonka because they're worried about how it will look in the program. I of course, I remember last year. Oh, there's a steal. And free throws coming for nice Mackenzie Lindell. by Lindell there. Mackenzie Lindell, the sophomore. Of course, we, last year, uh, I believe a team from Milwaukee was at the uh, Hopkins tournament. Or then, of course, at the breakdown uh, classic, we had a team from Olathe, Kansas there. Mason City, Iowa was also there. Yep. Had a good showing. Mason City expects to be back at Des Moines when Marsh rolls around. Well, our efforts are focused on the state of Minnesota, so you'll have to find another partner to go to Iowa. And <laughs> Leah Barnes hit the scores table with that pass. Unfortunately, the scores table is an inanimate object and cannot receive a pass, at least not in bounds. But Barnes not happy with it. But you got to let it go. I mean, it's going to be a good night for Richville regardless. Well, there's, but there's a nice... Nice possession there. That by might Hill be a Murray. cathartic layup for Caitlin Langer, even if Hill Murray doesn't win this game, just for her own benefit. We mentioned Langer was held scoreless in the first half. January with the bounce pass over to Taylor Moore, who can't finish. Hill Murray on the run. Langer again. And she's up to eight. I don't think Hill Murray has enough time to stage a comeback here, but even getting a few plays in, yeah. as Aaron Herman said, as January draws the foul on Savino, just getting a little bit better each game. She knew Richfield was going to be tough. Even with their lack of depth with go-to players right now, they're still a talented group. Number two in the 3A rankings as of now, but... That could change as the season progresses. Fergus Falls currently ranked number one. That's going to be a backboard violation. Over and back violation committed by Richfield. No, you're, you're right, Mike, and I think not only will they get better, each positive thing that they do will instill that confidence that I was talking about at the top of the second half here, and that's really important. And even in Class 3A, you would you could argue that it's tough to really rank the field because 4A, most of the schools are in the Metro. You can, it, so the rankings there, pretty accurate reflection. When you start going to even 3A, then you start going to the smaller cities outside the Metro area, Fergus Falls, for example, Marshall, yep. schools that don't get a chance to play too many Metro area teams or really yeah. top teams elsewhere. And so Richfield being at number two, I think have more to do with the loss to Central than it is a moniker of their own talent. Yep. And rankings, so many. Co wow. January will add a couple more points to a total. So many coaches, so many members, I think emphasize records maybe a little too much when they choose these rankings and they don't factor in geography into account. Yeah. Yeah. I think you can definitely make a case on that front, Mike. And of course, once state tournament comes, you can throw all the rankings out the window anyway. Yeah. It was Richfield who was the number one seed last year in the 3A state tournament, and it was De La Salle who came out victorious. But that could also, again, be a, and course, an argument for the rankings that I talked about. And of course, De La Salle got a tough test from Park Center in the section final. You have to think Park Center might be one of those teams that could... They uh, could be a sleeper heavily. team, but Jessica they, January, not sleeping at all. No. She's up to 26. That's her season high, by the way. Of course, Park Center lost that part breaker last night to uh, Osseo. January will be called for a third personal foul. 
Richfield in the penalty, but it's of little consequence now. They will move to 3-1 and one on the year, and Hill Murray will drop to 2-4, and four, losing their four straight. And January steps back to the bench. I have a feeling she will Be done stay the there night. for the final 351. She doesn't need to do any more. Well, Langer back at the line, the vocalist who is a fan of Law & Order SVU. And before I forget, because uh, it's clear who's going to win this contest, Langer also takes part in volleyball. She goes up to 10. Another player whose name we mentioned a few times but didn't get much action today is Allison Angeli. Schramm missing from three-point range. Langer with the rebound. I want to get this in about Angeli because it's worth noting. Says she's a health nut and loves to work out. Yep. Don't tell me you had some workout routine with her. I read that. <laughs> Caitlin Langer scoring the layup for Hill Murray. That brings her up to a dozen. And Allison Angeli also takes part in peer ministry and tutoring. And I wanted to make sure we got that in because even though a lot of folks cluster in on games and how the players are doing and the numbers, the points, the rebounds, they're still athletes, they are still human, they're still students, yep. and there are plenty of solid character moments Absolutely. that sometimes don't get fleshed out enough. Jump ball, Richfield with the possession arrow. Oh, this is going to be a solid win for the Spartans. As they get ready to play their holiday tournament once more, they're going to get Cambridge Isani for their first game. And the matchups are set up where it looks like a Richfield Kennedy rematch is likely because Kennedy that, will that play would be, that would be really awesome to see Kennedy plays Highland Park in the first round and the Scots are down from their performances from the last couple of years so they don't figure to be a threat to Kennedy who's number three in class 4A or number two they're somewhere up there always oh, called it a the Kennedy could, could just find a way to put it all together. They might very well be the most dangerous team in Class 4A. And with the injuries to Hopkins, exactly. even though they have the depth and are still the favorites, the field is a little closer. This is Kyla Adams at the line. Well, it's, it's just uh, one of those intangibles that changes the mix just a little bit. Megan Schneider going in the game for the Pioneers, number 30. Well, you lost T.T. Starks, Hopkins did, I should say, and Maria Livingston. Yeah. Two solid players. Both were starters, if I recall. And now you have to replace them, which isn't impossible with how Brian Cosgrove handles that staff. But you lose that talent. I mean, well, factor in the losses to graduation as well yeah. with players like Sidney Coffey. Yeah. And Hopkins doesn't look as invincible as they once did. It's still going to be tough well, to take it's, them down. It's, it's definitely, their metal is going to be tested early. That is for sure. And because of geography, you know, we're not going to see a Fergus Falls Richfield matchup, which I think is a shame. I think it'd be a lot of fun to see how D. LaSalle, Richfield, some of these Metro 318s would handle Fergus Falls, Marshall, and some of the top outstate teams. Of course, I haven't had a chance to talk about this to you as Caitlin Langer you know, can't get a couple more there. Taylor Moore with the rebound. Next year, if you go to Target Center for the state tournament, that's going to be the last time uh, the championship round is hosted there. Because next, after this season, they'll be moving it to Mariucci and Williams Arena because Target Center is hosting a new college hockey tournament from the conference born out of the ashes of the old WCHA. That'll definitely be different. 
It will for me. Langer with a block, and she will get free throws. One-on-one -on -one situation for the Pioneers. And looking ahead for Hill Murray, as we've mentioned before, Aaron Herman says the biggest challenge for the Pioneers will be learning how to win. Because even though they had maybe one, two player teams in previous years, Tessa Cicci knew how to win. Yeah. Bethany Doolittle knew how to win. Yep. These folks aren't quite there yet, but no. they'll, they will get there. They will get there. And you know, the neat thing about it is, Mike, is that it, it's it's fun to watch a team progress, you know, to to take that next step, to watch them develop. It's well, really a beautiful thing to watch. It's a mantra that even St. Paul Central adapted when they won their state championships. Nicole Thompson gets the jumper for the Pioneers. Now, they weren't the best of teams at the start of the year. And De La Salle, historically, they've had slow starts. They usually drop the first game or two of the season. And the last couple of times that's happened, they won the state championship. I remember them getting throttled their first weekend as new player in for Richfield. Tenzin Zega, number 10. Try to say that five times fast. Fouls on Moore, moot point now. Sammy Schneider at the line. I think what's going to be really important for Hill and Murray here in these next coming weeks, you know, especially after the first of the years, to see how the young, the young players, the freshmen, the sophomores, how they develop and how they improve their games. That's the benefit of having a young team. Because you, know, you have to figure that the juniors, you know, they're 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 maybe perhaps just a. Just one step away, you know, from being where they want to be. But it takes longer for the freshmen and the sophomores. And that's where coaching becomes so valuable. Yep. That's why you see a lot of familiarity, I believe. Brian Cosgriff at Hopkins, you know. He's got a foul and a three-point play chance here for Megan Schneider, who gets on the board. And so you're... Hill Murray getting some points here to end the game. It's not going to change the outcome. And it certainly doesn't change that Richfield you know, was the better team tonight, but yeah. Hill Murray getting a few good possessions here late. Something to take with them. Yep. It's just one of those positives, you know, that they can build on. But yeah, to finish that point, you know, Faith Johnson Patterson at De La Salle, Willie Taylor at Central. It, there's a reason why you see the same coaches of the same teams compete for state tournament appearances exactly. at least year after year. Exactly. They have a system. And in this level where discipline is so valuable, it pays. It's not like the WNBA where you may not have the best coach team, but if you have the right players, you can plow your way through and win yeah. a WNBA championship. Yeah. And college basketball, there's quite a disparity. Yep. Here, if you don't have a strong coaching system, no matter how talented your players are, you're just not going to go far. No. Nice put back Bobby by Beaver Bobby Beaver. That will get back. her on the newspapers tomorrow. Well, good to see these reserves getting a few plays in late, getting on the score sheet, and knowing their names will appear in tomorrow's newspaper and online. Final buzzer sounds. Richfield wins 57-40. They go to 3-1 and one on the year. Hill Murray falls to 2-4. and four. Your thoughts, as you mentioned, Richfield, despite their lack of size, seem to own the boards tonight. Yeah, you know, early on it was those turnovers that killed them. They had a plethora of turnovers, and it just, things got away from them pretty early. And they never were really quite able to break out of that deficit that they were in to, you know, to really make Richfield sweat a little bit. We'll try to get a word with Jessica January, our player of the game. We'll stick around for that. You're watching high school girls basketball on TSB television. 
Mike Beaton here with Jessica January. 26 points, season high tonight, and at least from my vantage point, it's the second Richfield game I've covered this season. You seem to be the most comfortable uh, in all your games thus far. Um, yeah, I mean, um, starting off, um, I wasn't really sure like how our offense was working because we have a new coach, so we have a lot of new like offensive sets and stuff. But um, we've had time to practice, and I think the last few practices have been very productive, and so I've gotten more comfortable out there, and I know like what our, my teammates are going to do and stuff. And even this last week, I saw you play against Central, and it seemed like no matter who had the ball, nobody could really get in any kind of rhythm. Mm -hmm. One week later, you're going out scoring 26. Richfield scored the first 12 points of this game, and there was no question uh, who came out to play tonight. Yeah, I think um, practice and, I mean, Central, that was like our third game playing. So, you know, we have two new additions to our team, and it's just getting comfortable with each other and figuring out, like, the tendencies of our other players. So we figured that out tonight. And speaking of transitions, uh, you kind of transition as taking that leadership role as being the senior, kind of being the one big player coming back to Richfield. How have you handled that role, and what have you learned so far in, in that experience? Um, definitely. Well, it's not only me. We actually have, like, a lot of seniors on our team. So, um, you know, all, all of my teammates are stepping up and playing their roles. And just by being the point guard, you have to be able to, to you know, direct the floor and make decisions so I think just but being confident in my other teammates has helped me a lot. Now Hill Murray at least in years you played they've for the most part been a thorn in Richfield side over the years kind of a big rivalry tonight you win by 16 and we're up by 20 points up until the last minute or so what do you think that says about how much Richfield has grown since uh, you've taken part in varsity ball here? Um, well, Richfield or uh, Hillmary is still a pretty good team, but um, you know they lost Tessa Cicci and a couple other their guards. So we just tonight we just focus on transitioning them because they're obviously all like way bigger than us. So we just focus on running out and trying to outrun them because we couldn't outsize them. But um, yeah, we just we just have more people coming back for us. So. And what else are you hoping to learn or acquire or improve on? It's. Uh you make this transition next year going from Richfield over to DePaul and the confines of Allstate Arena. Um, you know, I mean, just the main thing is just having fun this year and keep working on um, my game and just, you know, learning new skills that I can bring over to DePaul and, you know, just have fun this year. So. I guess that's something you can work on as opposed to the homecoming competition. I came across that and actually um, one of your teammates beat you, Haley Limblum. Yeah. She couldn't play tonight. <laughs> Well, what is what is she doing to kind of keep the team going, even though she's out right now? Because she brings a lot of defensive anchor sh yeah. on de as a leader, and um, just overall, just brings a very bubbly vibe to the team. Yeah, I mean, she's on the bench, always cheering in practice, always very positive, and plus we have other guards that are able to step up and fill her spot as well. So, it's a, it's so it was less of a blow then when she picked up the homecoming queen award. Or? Yeah, no, it was good. <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> I'm yeah. sure everybody. Well, I'm sure everybody was happy for yeah. one another, and yeah, definitely. So, just you've got the holiday tournament coming up. Of course, can you give us a preview of that? What you're looking forward to uh, getting to play Cambridge Isani to start off? Yeah, um, I don't know. We're just excited to be able to play. Um, you know, it's more practice for us, for our conference teams, and for our section. So, yeah, we're just ready to play. <laughs> and then, lastly, I know you don't like saying hi to anybody, so instead, I'm going to just add, give you the soapbox here. Is there anything you'd like to say about? players just about to anyone out there you know, floor is yours um just thank thank you to all our fans who have supported us and my parents and everyone else so you did find <laughs> someone to say hi to after all these years <laughs> yeah. well congratulations jessica we'll see you next week and uh enjoy the holidays thank you, you too. that does it from here richfield wins 57 41 for everyone here i'm mike beaton thank you for watching